I commence praising, glorifying, and exalting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the only one worthy of all worship, all praise, all glorification. I send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers, Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his family, his companions, and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment. Indeed, beloved brothers and sisters, the best speech is the book of Allah, Jalla wa ala, the Quran, that he has sent down to us as nur, as light, as huda, as guidance, as rahma, as mercy, and as a shifa, as a healing for what lies within the hearts and souls of human beings. And the best of that guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beloved brothers and sisters, in pondering over the subject for today, I struggled because there is so much to say when it comes to our beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And at the final moments of trying to put it all together, I can only think of, because of the theme of the conference, speaking about heroes, to see why is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a hero for me personally. Rather than shedding light on all of, mashallah, his accolades and the things that you may already know, I decided to look at it and say, why, what has moved me? What has he done that has caused me to want to be the person who I am today? And I hope that in this weekend, as you've been hearing the journeys of all of these amazing, mashallah, companions and scholars and the likes, that you have been internalizing what resonates most with you. And because of that, when we think of the word hero many times, we immediately think of a warrior who has placed their life on the line. Someone who went into battle amongst thousands of warriors, fought hard, came out with 70 wounds or more, still alive, still breathing, and ends up victorious thereby liberating their people from defeat and being conquered. But when speaking about our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I love the definition given by Debbie Mazar regarding who a hero is. She stated, a hero is somebody who is selfless, who is generous in spirit, who just tries to give back as much as possible to the people. A hero is someone who saves people and who really deeply cares about human beings. There was no one on the face of the earth more selfless than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was no one more generous than Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There was no one who tried to help people as much as possible, always being there for them, than the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there was no one who really deeply cared the way he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, cared for human beings. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala he reminds us of this in the Quran where he says regarding our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam فَلَا عَلَّكَ بَاخِعُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِلَّمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفَا He says, now perhaps, O Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you will grieve yourself to death over their denial. If they continue to disbelieve in the message, لَعَلَّكَ بَاخِئُ النَّفْسَكَ أَلَّا يَقُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ Perhaps you, O Prophet, will grieve yourself to, dis over their, to death over their disbelief. 
This verse, it really highlights the selflessness of the Prophet Sallallahu He was brought to a point of sorrow and pain because the people would not believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This was a concern for him, a worry for him. He wanted what was best not only for his own people, not only for his family, not only for his tribe, but rather he wanted what was best for all of humanity. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, as you all know, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ and we have not sent you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, except as a mercy for the entire world. It was this mercy that Allah sent that was concerned for the world, concerned for their faith, their well-being, their lives, their families, and everything connected to it that we look up to. Many of us in this room Right now, in this moment, in this instant, if we ask ourselves and we're completely honest with ourselves, do we have that type of care for humanity, for human beings, or am I a selfish person who only thinks about myself, my children, my spouse, my family? And because I want to make this realistic, because it is what motivates me, I remember and can never forget the day that we opened up our non-for-profit organization and we wanted to serve our people in our country. And I remember when we began to raise funds because our people were left in darkness for over a year with no electricity, that as we traveled throughout the Muslim community asking them for their help, that the answer that we would get or the question that they would ask, they would say, Imam, why do you care? They are not Muslim. Our goal should be to help the Muslims in the Ummah we should not spend our wealth and time on the disbelievers. My response, why do I care? Because perhaps, O oh Prophet, you will grieve yourself to death over their denial because they were rejecting the faith. Why do I care? Because perhaps we are grieving and sad that our people are in darkness and in disbelief. Why do I care? Because every day that I wake up, my entire family remains to be non-Muslim. Why do I care? Because it pains me to see them lost in this world and that we have such a beautiful gift that we want to share and compart and they have yet to accept it. The Prophet, he understood this. He understood it well because he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the first Muslim, the first believer in his family. He understood how it felt to go to sleep and not have a family that didn't believe in Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. It made his night sleepless. It filled him with worry. It filled him with grief because he understood the importance of the lights of Iman and how that light illuminates the hearts, the soul and the mind. He understood how lost they were and how much he loved them. He understood that it was going to take everything in his being, in his soul, to reach the hearts, minds and souls of those whom he loved. He understood that the more they rejected, how difficult the task was going to be for him. And that even though he had the most beautiful product in the world, the product of Islam, the Quran, Iman, that getting people to accept this product was going to be filled with challenges, disappointments, and heartaches. But for many within the Muslim community today, 
who have been born amongst generations of Muslims. You have no idea what it's like to have family who don't believe. So the deep care, the love for people to have the light, the need to share it as the Prophet did tirelessly and endlessly has left the hearts of some of the believers because they have forgotten that the Prophet's mission was all about guiding hearts, minds, and souls. His business was human beings. The Prophet was one who deeply cared to the point that Allah had to inform him, Ya Muhammad, take it easy, you're going to grieve yourself to death, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is why I say that he is my hero. This is why I say that he fills me with inspiration, with hope. He fuels me with passion and drive. This is why I personally work so hard to care for other people, Muslim or not. Because Allah said, لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا Because indeed in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best example. So if I take the Messenger of Allah as the best example, then I have to be concerned with people, with their lives, with their well-being, with their guidance, as he sallallahu alayhi wasallam was, because I also understand what it's like to be the first Muslim, the first believer among my people, among my family. I too have sleepless nights. I too am worried. I too am grieved and saddened. I too see how much work there is ahead of us as we are rejected at times. And I too, in these moments and times, overwork, my, overwork myself to give myself more than I have or need on most days, to work when I should rest, to be up when I should sleep, to travel when I should be with family. Just last night, as I was delivering a talk in Spanish about Jesus to some brothers and sisters in Washington, D.C., who had non-Muslims and brought their families to an event, a sister came up and asked a question. And as she asked this question, I can see her eyes well up with tears, her voice begin to choke up, as she says, what do I do, Imam, about my family who does not want to accept Islam? And I ask myself every time I hear that question. In the Muslim community, who is going to feel her pain? Who will understand her sorrow? Who will see her grief? Who will be there for them in these moments of uneasiness. And I equate this back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during the most difficult times and moments that he would walk around and he would see the family of Yasir and he would tell them to be patient that Jannah was going to be theirs, that that would be their abode. He would show up emotionally even though there was nothing he can do physically. And in many instances, this is our case with new Muslims who face the issues with their families when they come to us. That all we can do is show up emotionally even though we cannot change anything physically. What worries me is that are we understanding the work of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? the work that he left for us to do here when it comes to this guidance and spreading it, or are we so consumed that we have forgotten about this very important aspect of being concerned for other human beings, Muslim or not? This is a major teaching in the very life of the Prophet wasallam that he handed down to his students, the companions, Ridwanullahi alayhim who imitated him in loving and caring for humanity. Mujahid, one of the tabi'een, he narrated that Abdullah ibn Amr, he came home and found a sheep 
was slaughtered by his family. And he immediately asked his family, did you give any of it to your Jewish neighbor? Did you give any of it to our Jewish neighbor? For I heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say, Jibreel continued to advise me to take good care of the neighbors until I thought that he would make them one of the inheritors. And this hadith can be found in a tirmidhi Ibn Hajar, he said that the word neighbor means both Muslim and not. Righteous or sinful, friend or enemy, stranger or resident, beneficial or harmful person, relative or not, those who are close or those who are farther. Abu Dhar, in a narration found in Muslim, he said, my close friend, to express the relationship they had with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Advise me if I cook with broth to increase its water, then to choose one of my neighbors and to give them some of it. The care the Prophet showed for the people was incredible. We are talking about the busiest man on the face of the earth. No one was busier than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No one had more responsibility than him. No one had more people demanding of his time than him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But even with that, he made sure that he would show up for human beings, Muslim and non-Muslim alike. Even we have in that narration of Anas radiallahu anhu that the Jewish boy was sick and the Prophet went and visited him. And he told him to accept Islam and his father, he looks at his father, his father says, Ati Abu Qasim, obey him and he accepts Islam. And the Prophet sallallahu says, praise be to Allah who saved this young boy from the fire of hell. This man, subhanAllah, who was the most important man of the earth, took his time out to go visit a young, non-believing boy. He could have said, someone else can do the job. I have a thousand and one things to do. But we know that Allah says, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ فَسَتُبْسِرُونَ وَيُبْسِرُونَ بِأَيِّكُمُ الْمَفْتُونَ that you, Muhammad, are truly on a high standard of morality and character, and soon you and they, the pagans, will see which of you is mad. Subhanallah. We see that, subhanallah, this is, mashaAllah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We see that Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he narrates regarding the black woman who passed away and it's key here to use the word, the black woman. That the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he realized that she was no longer around. He said, what happened to her? Where is she? They said, Ya Rasulullah, she passed away. He said, why did you not inform me? And Subhanallah, Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he said, it was like if they considered the matter not worthy of mentioning. Like she was just anybody else, we don't have to bother Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa with that. But the Messenger of Allah is saying, why didn't you come get me? Why didn't you inform me? They took him to the grave, he made Salatul Janaza, and then he said the graves are filled with darkness for those residing in them and Allah brightens them by my prayer for them. The hadith can be found in Bukhari and Muslim. Beloved brothers and sisters, through these acts, we see that subhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he impacted his companions. And that impact should be the impact that happens in our hearts and our minds as well. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, impacted by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Umar visualizing, watching Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, sees him go inside of the house of the old woman, he leaves, Umar goes and he knocks on the door to find out what was Abu Bakr doing there and he asks the old woman. And she says that she didn't know who he was. 
but that he comes and he cleans the house, he swaps my clothes, and that he cooks breakfast for her at times. And then that he leaves. And she said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him. It is through these acts of love for humanity, for humanity that you may have and share and compart that you can be from those who end up in a special place because people end up praying for you, subhan rabbil azim. In conclusion, I want to share with you a story that brings it to reality. <coughs> in 2017, as I went back to my country of Puerto Rico to do the work of helping, we went to find a woman who worked with one of my partners, his daughter. She had no family there. She was in the home alone. We end up finding her in her city. It's quite complex in Puerto Rico. You just don't have streets where you can put it into your GPS and go. Street names are like about this long. You have to go into the community. You have to ask by the last name of the person in the community. Mashallah, the people know each other because it's still that way. Mashallah, families live amongst one another and people begin to direct you. And we found her with no food, no money, no water, nothing, last shape. We brought her in a bunch of food and we sat down with her to converse with her for some time. And then after an hour or so, we leave. This woman by Allah, she calls me or messages me two to three times a year. And I forget about her, subhanAllah. And I see her number come in and I, oh, subhanAllah, this is the woman from Manati. I pick up the phone and I say, how are you? How are you doing? How's everything? And she says to me, Wesley, you and your partner, Jose, showed up for me in a time when I had nothing. I'll never forget about you. Every time I pray, every time I supplicate, I ask God Almighty to bless you, to protect you, to grant bounties upon you. You have a grandmother here. Whenever you're in town, you can come and you have food and a place to stay. These are the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My father, he just recently, subhanallah, shared some information with me as I was at the doctor's office with him. He says, I was out and I saw a man, he looked homeless and the man stopped me. And he said, can I talk to you for a minute? And my father said, sure. The man said, I would like to ask you for something. My father said, what is it that you would like to ask? He says, I'm an immigrant to this country. I came illegally into this country because back home, they told me back home that when I come to America, there's going to be pearly white gates, money, opportunity. There's going to be so many things here for me. And I find myself sleeping under a bridge with nowhere to go. And back home, it would have been much easier for me to survive than it is here in this place of horror. Do you have a dollar that you can give me? I haven't eaten all day. My father said he began to look and he couldn't find a dollar. He said, I only had $20 to my name. He said, I told the man, I'm going to give you all I have left. He said, but I need one thing that you promised me to do. The man said, what is that? He says, I need for you that when you buy the food with this $20, that before you go to eat, that you remember my name, Pedro. And that you ask God because I'm sick. And I've been going through things in my life. And I'm being tested. That he protect me, guide me and heal me and that every time you go to eat you don't forget about me 
And the man, he told my father, I'm going to pray for you every time I eat. I looked at my father and I said to my father, this is who our prophet was, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Someone who cared about people. Someone who did not judge people. Someone who gave time and attention, especially to those in need, those who most would ignore, like this man, due to him being homeless and in the streets. This is the lifelong impression that our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has left upon me personally to be a person who cares about others, to be a person who tries to be selfless, to be a person who shows up even when most think you're not going to show up because you're too busy because you're the imam, because you're a leader, because of whatever it is that they may think about you, that maybe you're not even worthy of having or worthy of that type of recognition. This is what it means to be a Muslim, to be a believer. This is what it means to be a person, as we started out with the definition of a hero, who deeply cares about humanity, and this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is my hero. Joseph Campbell, he said, a hero is someone who has given his or her life to something bigger than oneself. A hero is someone who has given their life to something bigger than oneself. And I know for a fact that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was someone who gave his life to something bigger than himself for all of us. Jazakum Allahu Khairan. Wassalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.